Hello everyone, my name is Michael from Polygon Island and today I'm doing a quick tutorial on just product rendering in Blender. Uh, how to kind of set up a good looking render for any kind of product, um, any kind of real model you're making. Um, because it's a very simple thing and not a lot of people know just how to do it very easily. So that's just what I'm going to go over in this quick video. So uh, for this, I just have this model of uh, some Audio-Technica headphones. Um, I grabbed them off of Sketchfab. They're by artist Omar alone. Um, I don't know if I pronounced that right, but uh, I'll leave the link to this in the description. As always, you can just download it. Um, I'll show how to set, set up the textures and everything. We're going to be using this model for this tutorial. So let's get right into it. So first, we're going to open a new project. Uh, we're just going to click General. Um, I'm not going to save this. Uh, we can go ahead and delete our default queue by hitting delete or X on our keyboard. Uh, both of them will delete it. Just X will bring up a little dialog thing asking you if you want to delete it. So if you're not quite sure in your decision, Blender reassures you. Uh, so uh, next thing we're going to do uh, is we're going to go ahead and import our model. So um, we're just going to go to file import. It's an FBX model. So we're going to go down to FBX. Uh, navigate to wherever you have it. Uh, mine is right here. Um, we're going to import that. Wait a few seconds and bam, it's in our scene. We're going to go ahead and hit S and then 5 um, to scale it up about 5. Mm. Let's do S7. Um, we're going to scale it up um, about 7 times and we're going to have the headphones about this size. Uh, so next thing what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and position them. Uh, so um, whether you position your model uh, is up to you. Um, just make sure that it looks good. Uh, make sure that you're getting the right angles make sure the right things are showing if you have any logos or branding on it Make sure that's showing um, you don't want to be showing a model that nobody can really tell what exactly it is um, It doesn't look aesthetically pleasing. It doesn't look like you would wear it use it do whatever with it Just make sure you capture the angles of your model very well um, Try to look at references try to look at other product images um, online and on websites um they, those can be really helpful at deciding what angles to put your models as if it's uh, the same type of something else um, Just different stuff like that. Um, just look at things practice and just see what looks good So for these uh, they're headphones So I'm gonna double tap R on my keyboard to go into trackball rotation mode, and then I'm just going to kind of do something like this um, Hit R again to bring them up like this um, Hmm just rotate it until something looks good. Um, I'm gonna kind of do something like that, um, just like I did, uh, like I had in the original. Um, and we're just going to have it like that. So it shows one earmuff, it shows the headband, um, it shows the logo on, or this little imprint on the other side. Um, it shows this little metal bar. We just have a lot of good stuff in this um, angle. Um, might adjust it like this a little bit and then what we're going to do is we're going to get set up our camera by hitting control alt and zero on our keyboard to lock the camera to our viewport um, and now what we're going to do is we're going to go over to our render tab um, in render engine we're going to switch this to cycles just because it's a lot easier to just make things look good in cycles than it is EV. we're going to change the device to see to gpu compute uh, blender just updated it like yesterday so this might be great out for you if it is hit edit uh, go up here to the top left and hit edit preferences um, system and then under cuda optics hip your graphics card will be in there somewhere select it and then it should automatically save um, so once we have that set up, what we're going to do is we're going to go to the tab right below the, win the render tab, which is our output properties. Um, and under format, resolution X, we're going to go ahead and change this to whatever your resolution Y is. Um, this can be as big as small as you want it. Mine is going to be pretty small. It's just going to be 1080 by 1080. But you could go up to like 4096 by 4096 if you want like a 4K one by one resolution image. You can also do um, 1920 by 1080 and have, um, and for example... Um, have the headphones over on this side uh, if I were to zoom the camera out they would be smaller of course um, they wouldn't be clipping through the frame but you can kind of have them on one side and have some kind of text over through here branding it as kind of a banner but if it's just a single product render I usually like to keep it as a one by one aspect ratio for like Instagram pictures and stuff so um, for this tutorial I'm just going to um, uh, change it to 1080 by 1080 um, so 1080 by 1080. 
Um, this is just so um, it renders fast for me, honestly. Um, lower resolution, faster render times. But uh, once we do that, we can go ahead and select our camera and our scene, our scene collection over here. Um, we can just put these kind of in the center. Um, and also what we're going to do is we're going to go to our camera tab right here. Um, it's this green camera. Change the lens type from perspective to orthographic. And then just kind of zoom it in um, until your headphones are in frame. Um, this orthographic is just kind of a flat view of our headphones. There aren't any uh, perspective or warping um, with the headphones. So that's just a good thing to have. Um, so now what we're going to do is we're going to add the background plane. Um, so we're going to hit Shift A, Mesh, and then Plane. We're going to scale this up to about 20. Uh, hit S and then 20 on your keyboard. Um, hit Tab on your keyboard to go into Edit Mode. This is where you edit all your vertices and you do your modeling and stuff. Uh, we're going to go up here to the top left and uh, go to Edge Select. We're going to select one edge, hit Extrude um, or E on your keyboard, um, and then hit Z. Um, you should see this blue bar comes up. Uh, this is locking it to the Z axis. And just kind of extrude it um, up to a good length like that. Uh, next, we're going to select the uh, edge that we had just selected and hit Control B on our keyboard to start beveling it. And you can see it starts to bevel it, but there's only one face to. To, so to fix that, uh, use your scroll wheel. Um, you can just scroll, um, and then, bam, we have more subdivisions. Um, so once we have that, you can see that we kind of have this studio backdrop looking thing right now, but we can see the faces very visibly on this. Um, and in order to get around this without just adding a ton of geometry, um, we can just right click and click shade smooth. Um, and now that shades the entire thing, sm entire thing smooth. Um, we can go ahead and scale this um, on the Y axis um, just out a little bit right here and then just rotate it to where it's um, kind of just in the back of the headphones. Um, and now once we have this, what we can do, uh, I'm going to go ahead and move this just closer to our headphones. Um, about right there. Now what we're going to do is we're going to select this point light that's default in our scene. We're going to delete that. We're going to hit Shift A and go down to light and add three area lights. Um, we're gonna add these one at a time, but we're gonna add three in total. So the first one um, is gonna go on one side, on the right side behind the camera, uh, pointing toward the headphones. Uh, kind of line it up like this. Um, it, the power is going to be 1000, and the size is going to be five. So uh, the power obviously increases just the overall strength of your light and the size increases the size of your light. Um, I have a lighting video where I explain all this in more detail, but basically the size of the light depends how sharp your shadows are. So if you want softer shadows, you don't want your shadows being as harsh, then make sure the size of the lamp is bigger. Um, so once we do that, we can basically just duplicate this light. Um, we're gonna put one above the camera, pointing kind of down at the headphones, um, kind of like this. And then we're going to have one on the left side, kind of adjacent to the one on the right, pointing at the headphones as well. And so now if we go, if we hit Z, Z on our keyboard and go to Render tab, uh, we can see that we have this kind of lighting setup going on. But we have a lot of light bleed from this gray background. Um, and the way to fix that is to just go to the World tab, which is this red globe, um, change the color all the way down to black. Um, so now we can see that we have this. Um, if you want, you can change the uh, light uh, strength up, which I'm probably going to do. I'm probably going to change this to like 2,000 um, on each of these lights here, just so we have shut up. Um, just so we have a little bit more light in the scene. So now we have this, um, but it's not textured yet. So it's kind of just this white on white background. Um, which if you ever do do this um, just change just for the love of God Please change the background to like a gray color like this like you can see that looks so much better If you're ever doing a white product on anything, please do not make the background white. It looks horrible You can't distinguish anything from anything. It's just not a good idea um, You want contrasting colors you want things that um, stand out from your background You don't want your product being washed in there. You don't want any of that uh, You want your viewers to be able to look at this and be like hey, that is a pair of headphones um, Yeah um, but getting into texturing this thing, all we're going to want to do is we can go out of uh, render view by hitting Z and then solid. 
Um, also, if you hit C and hold it, you can see that um, you can move around to each of the views. You also can hit Z and then any of these numbers that are listed um, to go into whichever viewport you want. So solid would be six, so I could hit Z and then six, and then I would go into solid view. Um, anyway, texturing, um, go under the Blender logo at the top left, and then you should see that your cursor turns into this little crosshair thing. Click and drag, and you'll separate the window. Um, go back under the Blender logo, click this little ball and grid, and then go down to Shader Editor. Um, you can click N to close this little bar over here because we're not going to need that. And all we're going to want to do is click New. Um, so uh, keep in mind, this is for this headphone model itself. If that isn't already obvious, um, whatever uh, you have, I assume you already have textures for and know how to texture. Uh, this is kind of the layout of just to texture these headphones for this tutorial. Um, and to just texture a lot of things. Um, this is already UV unwrapped, so it's a lot easier for me. Um, but if your object isn't UV unwrapped, you're going to want to go ahead and do that. There's tons of tutorials on that for YouTube. Um, but if your object is UV unwrapped and you can texture it and you have textures, then it's the same principle of here. So um, you just have your principal BSDF. All we're going to want to do is um, click Control T. Um, if your textures are labeled in a typical PBR manner, you can hit Control Shift in T, and it'll bring up a um, dialog window where you can select all of your textures at once and just import them in one click. Um, for these headphones, they are not labeled in a um, typical PBR format, so I'm going to have to manually um, apply to each texture. So just hit Control T while clicking on your principal BSDF with uh, the add-on Node Wrangler enabled. Um, you have to have that add-on enabled, otherwise that shortcut won't work. Um, just go to Edit, Preferences, Add-ons, and then just search for Node Wrangler, enable it, and then that shortcut will work. So um, for the image texture, I'm just going to go to where my textures are. Um, so uh, this is my base color. Um, it'll either be labeled as color, base color, albedo, something along the lines of that. Uh, for these, we're going to keep uh, the settings just fine on this little texture node right here. But we're going to duplicate it by hitting Shift D while clicking on it and change the color space to non color. And then um, we're going to go ahead and get our roughness texture. Um, this uh, is this just plugs into your roughness. Um, this just defines where um, the rough and shiny parts are on your image. Um, if it's like not a roughness map and it's like a reflective something or metallic map or anything like that. Um, all you have to do is just hit, sh hit Shift A and invert, um, and that'll invert um, roughness to smoothness, whatever. Um, next, we're gonna uh, just duplicate this again by hitting Shift D. Um, also, um, if it if this did revert this color space back to sRGB, just change it back to non-color. Um, and then now we're going to go for our normal map. Um, this will either be called a normal map or bump map. If it's a bump map. Um, there's really no difference um, you can use either a bump um, either a bump node or a normal map node it doesn't make a real difference uh, this is a normal texture so I'm going to use a normal map node um, change this to non color as well um, put the color into the color of the normal map and then the normal of the normal map into the normal of the principal BSDF um, and so now once we have that um, there is one more texture we need and that's our ambient occlusion so we're going to duplicate this once again um, browse and I'm going to go for this AO texture um, change it to non-color and then I'm going to hit shift A at a mix RGB node just drag that um, in the middle of our base color or albedo of, in our principal BSDF it'll automatically connect um, we can bring our ambient occlusion and then just mix these together um, and I'm pretty sure that's all I need for these headphones yeah so if we go back into render view we can notice that this is actually still white and the reason for this is our mix RGB node is still set to mix and we need to set this to multiply um, don't ask me why um, I'm not sure it, it just works that way but now we can see that we have our headphones and everything is white and fine and dandy um, you can play with a lot of things if you want to um, you can use a white um, full background as well um, and so that way it just kind of lightens the scene um, you could keep it black if you kind of want more contrast between this and the background um, I'm gonna keep it at this personally uh, actually mm. 
something like this I would say uh, looks pretty good um, and you can always just throw this in any kind of image editing program and just play around with color curves and all that to bring more contrast out um, but that is pretty much it um, the headphones um, we've textured them and the lighting setup um, it's just a simple three-point light setup with a white background um, and you have a product image um, so now you can go sell your models um, hopefully make you some money um, let me know how that goes um, hopefully you learned something in this video hopefully um, this video brought you something today if it did leave a like and subscribe that always helps me out I love you guys so much my name is Michael from Polygon Island and I'll see you guys next time bye